We are in a series called The Power of Holy Habits and I've been going through several ones. We did four so far. Today is the fifth and this one is called The Power of the Living Word. Uh, we're going to talk about the Bible, we're going to talk about scripture reading and the power of that holy habit. Today we're looking at the power of the living word, the Bible, and I want to just drive that home. But today it's slightly different where I'm going to get do a lot of reading in the beginning. Okay? Okay, a lot of reading. So for those of you who don't normally open your Bible, don't normally read the Bible, you are going to be tempted to go to sleep. So I ask you in Jesus' name. To stay awake and stay focused because I'm going to slow it down and read slowly. And the rest of the message is not going to be so much in the text, but it's going to be about what we've read in the concepts we read. About the word of God, the best commentator is the word of God. About God himself, the best commentator is God himself. If you want to get to know me, ask me. Right? So, uh, as we get to know God, look at Psalm 119. It says so much about the Word of God and it's a very long psalm. So I've just taken a few verses out of that and I'm going to read that for you. Okay? You've got that? If you've got your Bibles, turn to Psalm 119. If you've got your phones, go to Psalm 119 and stay there. The Word of God is God's primary way of revealing to you His heart and His mind. Say heart. Mind. Yeah. If you want to get to know me and I talk to you, the word is the best way to get to know me. Okay? In the beginning was the word. Together. In the beginning was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God. Let me complete that. And the word became flesh and walked among us. And we looked at him and we beheld his glory as one of the only begotten of the Father, sent from above. And we walked with Him and talked with Him and we got to know what God was like as we beheld His Son incarnate in Christ Jesus. The Word became flesh. The Word became flesh. And as He spoke and as He acted, prophets and, 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 and disciples wrote down and that Word became the living Word. Okay? The living Word which was from heaven has now become the written word which is in your hand, in your language, in your favorite version as well. There are hundreds of versions and God has put it in your hand so that you have access to the throne of the King of Kings and the Lord of Lords. Okay? In the beginning was the word. Listen to me carefully. I'm going to say something that you must not forget. God has revealed himself to you through his word. And that is never going to change. I'm going to go slow until you get it. That is never going to change. In the beginning was the word and the word became flesh and dwelt among us. God's word is how he reveals himself to you. And that's not going to change. It's not going to become a religion. It's not going to become a mystical experience. It's not going to become a spiritual experience. Nothing. It's never going to be anything else than the word. Which is why in the day of video and 3D, in the, in, the, in the day of incredible effects, sound effects, visual effects, in the day of Steven Spielberg, in church we still have preaching of the word. Why? Because faith comes from hearing. Hearing the word of God. It doesn't say in the beginning there was video. Although God would have done a smashing job of that as well. Right? But it says in the beginning was the... It started with sound. And I want you to really understand that. Because the sound of a voice, the sound of God's word is what anchors us in who we are today. When the baby hears mama's voice, it knows it's okay. It knows mommy is around. It knows everything's okay. When the teenager hears his dad's voice, he knows he can be confident, he can face the world, he can step out and become a man. When a man hears his boss's voice, he knows he's somebody, he's in charge, he has responsibility, he has a calling, he has a job. When an army hears the chief of commission, chief, chief, chief's voice, the commanding officer's voice, when an army hears that, they go out and they will give their life at the sound of his voice. Voice is everything. And the word is where it begins. Let's look at God's word. 
Psalm 119, and I've picked some verses, and I'm going to try and go slow, but I'm also going to kind of keep pace, okay? Blessed are those, and blessed means happy, blessed are those who are, whose way is blameless, those who don't, you cannot blame them constantly or find fault with them, who walk in the law of the Lord. First phrase, law of the Lord. Blessed are those who keep his testimonies. Second phrase, testimonies. Who seek him with their divided heart, whole heart, who seek him with their whole heart, who also do no wrong and walk in his ways. So the opposite of walking in his ways, you're going to land up doing wrong. No, the opposite of walking in his ways is not doing wrong. The opposite of walking in his ways, you're going to land up doing wrong. Because his ways are what teaches you what is right. Who also do no wrong. You have commanded your precepts. Fourth phrase, precepts. You have commanded your precepts to keep it diligently. Verse 5. Oh, that my ways may be steadfast in keeping your statutes. David says to God, then I shall not be put to shame having my eyes fixed on all your commandments. Six, okay? I will praise you with an upright heart. There was a whole heart. There's a whole heart. Now there's the upright heart. He says, I will praise you with an upright heart when I learn your righteous rules. Phase, phrase three, seven, I think that is. I've lost count, but phrase seven, righteous rules. But he says, I will praise you. So praise and worship and an upright heart are together. When your right heart is not upright, when there's sin in your heart, when you are entertaining wrong in your heart, you cannot praise. No, no, no. It's not that you cannot sing. You cannot praise. So a person who cannot praise is probably entertaining some. Sin in heart, because what he says is, when I am upright, when I am right with you, when I'm walking in your ways, I automatically praise. You'll see more of that. Verse 8, I will keep your statutes, do not utterly forsake me. Verse 9, how can a young man keep his way pure? How? By guarding it according to your word. With my whole heart, are you picking up the spirit here? Whole heart, with my whole, not 75 to God, 25 to some girl. By guarding it according to your word, with my whole heart I will seek you. Let me not wander from, look, seek, wander from your commandments. Verse 11, I have stored up your word in my hard drive that I might not sin against you. Moving on. Blessed are you, O Lord, teach me your statutes. With my lips, I declare all the rules of your mouth. Get it? My lips, your mouth. I will declare with my lips what's coming out of your mouth. I'll be the conduit to the teaching of God's word. Okay, verse 14. In the way of your testimonies, I delight. I delight, I find joy in the ways. As much as I find it in, in, in fast cars and fancy houses, David is saying, as much as I find it in great bank accounts and stocks and bonds, as much as I find it in, in bonuses and, and rewards, I also take delight in your testimonies. I will meditate on your precepts and I will fix my eyes on your ways. Verse 16 says, I will delight in your statutes and I will not forget your word. Please deal bountifully with your servant that I may live and keep your word. So you see this tussle between I keep your word, please help me keep your word. I keep your commands, please help me keep your commands. I, 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 I'm doing it, but I know that I may not always do it. So please help me. Don't forget me. Don't let me go. Open my eyes. Every time I open my Bible, open my eyes that I may behold wondrous things out of your law. Because there is a chance that I could open the Bible and not actually see what you're saying. Not actually see what you're saying. You know, that's the phrase, right? I see what you're saying. That doesn't make any sense actually. If you think about the English. How can you see what I'm saying? But you know what it means. Because you see what I'm saying. It's late in the afternoon. What do you expect? All right, let's go to the next passage. The next passage is 33 to 40. 33 to 40. Teach me, O Lord, the ways of your statutes, and I will keep it to the end. Give me understanding that I may keep your law and observe it with my whole heart. 35. Lead me in the path of your commandments, for I circle, delight in it. Incline my heart, bend my heart, lead my heart to your testimonies and not towards selfish gain, because those two are opposites. Turn my eyes. Oh. 
Oh, slow down. Turn my eyes from looking at worthless things like TV and YouTube and the phone and give me life in your ways. Confirm to your servant your promise that I may be feared. Turn away the reproach that I dread from your rules, for your rules are good. Behold, I love your precepts. In your righteousness, give me life. Look at 57 to 64. Okay, can we skip this and go all the way to 97 to 404? 97 to 104. But you read it, 119, you go back home and read it, all right? Oh, how I love your law. It is my meditation all day long. Your commandment makes me wiser than my enemies. For it is ever with me. Verse 99. I have more understanding than all my teachers. He doesn't say I have more knowledge than all my teachers. He says I have more understanding. That means I have a deeper grip. A deeper... I, I get it. I get what life is about. I get what pain is about. I get what the dilemma of righteousness versus unrighteousness. Flesh versus the spirit. I get it. I have a deeper understanding. I have a driver's seat perspective of God's will for my life. I get it. I get where God is going because he's shown it to me. For your testimonies are my meditation. I understand more than the aged for I keep your precepts. So God's word does something that nothing else can do. We'll talk about it in just a bit. I, ha I hold back my feet from every evil way in order to keep your word. I do not turn aside from your rules for you have taught me. You have taught me rules. How sweet are your words to my taste, sweeter than honey to my mouth. Through your precepts I get understanding, therefore I hate every false way. Let's skip that and you can read it later on your own. Three areas I want to talk to you about and I want to leave you with some very practical tips on how you can resuscitate, resuscitate, recommence your habit of daily Bible reading. Okay? This is the book you should have a relationship with. This is the book that reads you. This is the book that reads you. This is the book that loves you. It, 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 it will tell you the truth, what even people who claim to love you will not tell you. This is the book that's worth your time. When you listen to God's word, and I use the word listen and not read. Why? Because faith comes from hearing. There is something about voice. Something about voice. I like it that it says listen and not read because then you'll say unpad fir unpad kya karenge? How will children, how will blind people come to know the love of God? How will, how will, uh, you know, uneducated, how will the fellow in the forest, in the jungle, how, those are those deep intellectual arguments people have had with me. Listen. You listen to God's word. And it's a communal thing. I speak the word. I read the word. You listen. Stories are told. You listen. God's word is his voice to us. If anybody says, have you heard the voice of God? Say, yes, I read it to myself today. God's voice is you reading his word. God's voice is you reading his word. If somebody else is reading it, that's also God's voice. But primarily, you're in the word. When you listen to God's word, something happens. What happens? Take note. Number one, your faith gets stronger. Your faith gets stronger. Faith comes from hearing, hearing the word of God. Something happens deep inside me that builds a confidence, builds a strength deep within me that tells me I am his. I belong. His promises are true. His word is everlasting. His praise endures forever. Something within me, when I hear his word, when I hear his word, my faith gets stronger. I get courage. The second thing that happens when I hear God's word is your burdens get lighter. Your burdens get lighter. Something about the word of God is amazing. It is like a double-edged sword. And not so much for fighting, but for operation. And when this double-edged sword, this knife, cuts through, it doesn't come in like an enemy trying to mess you up, but a skilled surgeon with an art and the experience of years coming to differentiate and to separate bone and marrow, tissue and artery. 
And be able to get into the crevices of your anatomy and know where your problem is. God sits down with you. With his, no, you're not listening to me. God sits down with you and he already knows what you're going through. His word will go through you and it will, it will just get to that spot where that cancer cell is, where that evil cell is, where that rebellious cell is and he will find it and he will take it out. He will bring it to your attention because you don't know it's there. That hairline crack in the system that could cause a failure to your marriage or cause a failure to your destiny, God will find it early. What you will not take from your parents or your loved ones or your spouse, what you will never take from a counselor or even from a YouTube channel, you will get from God's word. As you open the Bible and say, yeah, yeah, that is me. Yeah, that is me. As the word cuts through, it, it does its work. For the word of God is living and active, sharper than any two-edged sword, piercing to the division of soul and spirit, joints and marrow, discerning the thoughts and intentions of the heart. And no creature is hidden from his sight, but all are naked and exposed to the eyes of him to whom we must give an account. Your faith gets stronger. Your burdens get lighter. He counsels you. He tells you what your problem is. He tells you what your solutions are. And he counsels you out of, out of trouble. Your paths get clearer. Your paths get clearer. You get clearer, cl more clarity. Give me a verse. Give me a verse. Thy word is a lamp unto my feet. Thy word, my feet. Your word, my walk. Not to my whole road all the way to Timbuktu. But up to here. Just for the next step. And just for the next step. Because it's a relational leading. It's not a strategy leading. It's not a map or GPS leading. It's a relational leading. The leading, the way is that I am with you. He is with us and he gives light. So number one, your faith gets stronger. Then your burdens are lighter. Your path gets clearer. And your mission gets sharper. Your mission gets sharper. You become more and more aware of who you are and why you are on earth. You live under commission. You live by your calling. You move from career to calling. Career rewards you with cash, with money. Calling rewards you with investment, with influence, and with legacy. Calling will reward you with the richer things in life. Career will reward you with cash. And then you need some more and some more. Your mission gets sharper. So the first thing I told you about listening to God's word is that it does four things for you. It brightens you, it, it, it strengthens your faith, it lightens your burden, it, it clears your path, and it sharpens your mission. It sharpens your mission. When you get into the word and you allow the word to do its work, you ingest it, you digest it. When you digest God's word, you get four things. Number one, you get his will. You get his will. Romans chapter 12 verse 1 and 2 says, Therefore I beseech you, brethren, by the mercies of God, to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, that you may know what is the tested will of God, the good and perfect will of God. So your, the word in you, the word inside you, gives you the will of God. The word outside you, which is still in the Bible, doesn't give you any God's will. It leaves you with your own will. Okay? So you hear that, but it's not inside you, whole heart. But you have your will, because that's not inside you, with a whole heart. So you have a conflict, and therefore you find yourself fighting with God all the time. Fighting with God all the time. God has become this joy killer. Walking with God is boring. Walking with God is deathly. It just, it just saps the life. It doesn't make any sense. It doesn't have any joy. It doesn't have any anticipation and excitement. And this whole religious church, spiritual thing is just, I don't get it. No, you don't get it. You don't get it. And the reason you don't get it is because the word is not in you. Because the word is what does that work in you. Alright, so... God's will. When you ingest the word, you get God's will. You also get God's thoughts. You get God's thoughts. You get to know how he thinks. 
Because his, he, look, at, look, at, look at this. Let me read this for you, okay? I, I need to read this for you. Acts, Romans, Romans 11. Romans 11, just those last few verses here. I just saw this. I thought I'd read it myself. I don't know if it's there. It's not there. Oh, how great are God's riches and wisdom. Listen to this. How great are God's riches and wisdom and knowledge. Three things, riches, wisdom, and knowledge. Okay. How great are God's riches, wisdom, and knowledge. How impossible it is for us to understand his decisions and his ways. You agree? I don't get it. I don't get how God works, how he, how he makes decisions. I don't get it. But those thoughts become my thoughts when his word is inside me. For who can know the Lord's thoughts? Who knows enough to give him advice? And who, gives, who, who has given him so much that he needs to pay back? For everything comes from him, exists for his power, and is intended for his glory. All glory to him forever. Basically, man is no one to expect God to make an explanation. But God says, I'll tell you. I'll tell you. If you're mine, let my word abide in you, and I will tell you what I am thinking. You get God's will. You get God's thoughts. You get God's wisdom. The unsearchable wisdom of God. You get God's values. You get God's values. Because you value something. He values something else. You value differently. God values differently. You and I value the likes on Instagram. You and I value the appreciation of our classmates. You and I value a reward at the end instead of the journey. You and I value people giving to us. God values totally differently. You and I value puppies and fluffy rabbits and toys and rewards and what we have. God values what he gives. God values people who he can give to. God will look at a person who's lying on the side of the street in his own urine. Dirty, filthy, homeless. And God will see that and see through all of that dirt and God will see the image of God in him. And God will value that person. And you and I will ask him for his business card. And based on that, we will value him. We will respect and talk differently to people based on how much education they've put into the back of their brain. We value things differently. And when God's word comes into us, Prepare to become irrelevant to this world because you will value things differently. When you ingest God's word, you get God's will, you get God's thoughts, you get God's wisdom and get God's value. Let me add one more thing. When you are born again, God gives you the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit does four things in you with the word of God. What did I say? The Holy Spirit does four things in you with the word of God. Not on his own, not separately, with the word of God. Number one, it revives you. It revives you. Because the Bible says you were dead in your trespasses and sins. You were dead, dead to God. But he takes you and he brings you back to life. He gives you life. Okay? So you were dead in your trespasses and sins. You were dead to God. Now you are alive to God. The first thing the Holy Spirit does through the word of God, faith comes from hearing, is revive you. You are born again. You're born again by the word of listening to the word and believing the word. The second thing he does is he reconciles you. Because you were at enmity with God, now that you are in friendship with God, God brings the relationship back to a place of trust where you can trust him and he can trust you with, with mission, with resources, with agendas, with eternity. Is everybody with me? Are you with me? You have to build that trust. When two people fall apart and they reconcile, doesn't it take a little time to build that back again? So the Holy Spirit uses God's word every time you open it, every day as you read it, to rebuild that trust in God and rebuild God's trust in you. Psalm 8. Majestic, O oh oh Lord, our Lord, how majestic is your name in all the earth. What is man that you are mindful of him, that you should think, take a small man and give him so much that you should think of him as so great. Your thoughts towards us are like the sand of the sea. So, to revive you, bring you back to life. To reconcile you with God. To regenerate you. That is to give you his life. Go back to the first one. Is to revive you. That means to give you life. Okay? To regenerate you means to give you his life. Right? So when you 
I die, die in Christ. I was praying during the, during the communion. When you die in Christ, you're on the cross. Jeremy Dawson is dead in Christ. Okay? When Jesus rises again, Jesus lives his life through Jeremy Dawson. So God has to not only give me life again, but he has to give me Christ's life in me. I'm feeling very bad for you. I know it's hot. I know it's boring. I know like it's... Like, but, but this is good stuff. This is good stuff. I wish I had come to you at 6 in the morning, but this is good stuff. Try and, try and retain something. Okay, that's why it's good to write. Okay, so to regenerate you is to give you His life. Another word in my version, my words, is to reverse the deadness. To reverse the deadness. Imagine one part of your arm just died. One part of your body, it just everything just corroded and died. And it just remains dead. Those, those cells remain dead. And suddenly you see the whole thing coming back to life. And growing. And, and becoming fresh. Skin becoming fresh again. That's what the Spirit of God uses the Word of God to do in you every day. So while your body, Paul says, is decaying. Yeah, you look more and more every day like you've been through a car wash. While your body is decaying, your spirit is becoming newer and newer and newer. So... You were born one day and then you grew old and you grew old and decayed and died. But you were born again in the spirit and every day you're getting younger and newer and newer. And one day this carcass will fall to the ground. Huh? This tetra pack will fall to the ground and you will be in the presence of God and you will be as new as the day you were born again. To revive you, to bring life to you, to reconcile you with God, to regenerate, that is to give you His life, reverse the deadness. And finally to reassure you, to tell you that you have a place in heaven. To tell you that you have a place in heaven. So the word of God constantly tells you, you have a ticket to Germany, you have a ticket to Germany, you have a ticket to Germany. Every day it tells you you have a ticket to Germany. Okay, now tell me, what does that daily reminder that you have a ticket to Germany Give you, what perspective does it give you about Delhi? Talk to me. What perspective does it give you about Delhi? You're going to be leaving. You're not here for long. There's no point settling down. There's no point unpacking your bags. This is not home. You are heading out. Right? And you have a place there. People are expecting you there. And this is not your home. Every day you are reminded that this world is not my home. I'm just passing through and you don't get caught up with everything that's around you like when you take the metro and you get onto the metro either on the station or in the metro do you wonder what are all these people thinking about me what is their opinion about me why is he staring at my shoes why is he coming why is she coming so close you know all of those things you, 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 don't, you don't care you don't care what they think I'm here for 10 minutes, 20 minutes. When is this thing going to finish? When, I, when is the gate going to open? And then you walk out. You are there for a period of time and you walk out. The word of God will give you an understanding of how brief, fleeting and temporal this life is. And will set your goal, eyes on your real life which is hidden in God, Christ and God. Colossians chapter 3 verse 1 through 5. Alright, so... Do you have a habit of Bible reading? You know that it gives life. You know that it regenerates. What is the opposite of re regenerate? Uh -huh. Does that strike a bell? Yeah. So you do not want to be degenerate. You want to be a regenerate. Regenerate is becoming new every day. You know. You know what this does for you. It's like vitamins. You know, we know what vitamins does for us, but we don't take it every day. So what do you do? Do you take like seven on Sunday? Every day, every day. You take too much also, it's too bad. That's why pastors should keep it short. <laughs> okay, let me give you four ways you could get started. Okay, number one is a daily diet intake of, of chunks of scripture. Chunks, you can do this on your own. And if you are like me, you can't read or you get to the fourth verse and you're already thinking squirrel. <laughs> if you're like that, then... Put on an audio Bible and listen to the audio Bible. Listen to the audio Bible. You get even some with music in the background and all that. Steven Spielberg happening and everything. You can get that. Play that. Download that. Buy that. Okay? It doesn't, it doesn't have to be read. Okay? 
But you need to hear God's word. Long passage of scripture. Get it into the system. Get it into the system. Spirit of God, do what you want. Here's lots to deal with. Here's what's to deal with. All right. Number two is engagement with scripture. Three or four times a day, look at a, pa- a passage of scripture or a verse of scripture. Put it on your dashboard. Put it on your scooter. Put it on your car. Put it on your office green pin thingy bob. Just keep it up there. Use the app. Go tandem. Go tandem. Use the app. And the app will keep reminding you. In fact, in the beginning, the app sets the settings. It asks you, what are your hang-ups in life? Straight up, in the beginning, it asks you, like, what is your hang up So we're like, what is her name, you know? And, and you just tell everything in the beginning itself and it starts pumping verses that way only. You know, it's a, this is one, one depressed character. You send him all the encouragement verses. And you can't, okay? <coughs> then all, some guys like, I can't keep my eyes off girls. Then, you know, the, that other verse sends you four times a day. Number three, a memorization of scripture every month. Along with your home group, pick a passage of scripture, learn it, have fun with it, and memorize a passage of scripture every month so that you have 12 passages a year at least. Solid passages, not like two words, solid passage. And then a study of a doctrine every week. So you get into home groups and you open the Bible and facing each other, you ask the question, what is God like? What does he want from me? What are his purposes? What will be the outcome of my life? Who will be the center of my life? And you study the word, you tear the word apart, you wrestle with God's word, and you find your heart settle on doctrine. So you, a daily intake, an hourly engagement, a weekly memorization, or a monthly memorization, and a weekly study of the doctrine of God. Together, let's read this verse. Psalm 119, the first verse. Together, let's read it as we close. Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. One more time. Joyful are people of integrity who follow the instructions of the Lord. That could either be lying to you or telling you the truth. Decide now. Today, the 9th of June, decide, Lord, that's the truth. You don't decide it's the truth because it's your experience. You make it your experience because it's the truth and make up your mind right now and say a word to God, Lord, I will love you with my whole heart. I love your word with my whole heart. I will commit myself to this. I will go to OM bookstore this week and I will buy a new Bible. I will find time and I will set time aside. I will download the apps. I will do what I have to do. Get with an accountability partner. Find a home group. We have amazing home shepherds who love you and care for you. Not as much as I do. I love you more. But we have some amazing ladies. 